Well, this really does best encapsulate Facebook because really what is Facebook other than a bunch of ways to make your friends feel guilty? Welcome to season six where we're phoning it in. You don't think critically and then put a Pop-Tart into your body. I am highly caffeinated and minorly concussed. Aruga, aruga. What came first, the love sack or the gravity gun? It's my turn to do a sin with Sonic. This is for the freaks. (laughs) Too much piss. That's the kind of bad decisions we like to hear about. Let me a sleepy ass bat. How much shrimp can you fit in your mortal body? You told me you guys would be cool. That's season six intro material right there. Hello and welcome to Debate This, the show where no one is right, but someone is definitely wrong. In this show, we take time out of our busy adult lives to talk about comic books, video games, and massively multiplayer games, even the ones that are neither critically acclaimed nor award-winning. Name one. Farmville. Why would you do that? <laughs> That's what you I get. I think <laughs> that it's probably won some awards. Farmville has won some yeah, awards. Yeah, it has actually. won some um, awards. Is it really? Wow. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of... Segway, segway. You know, guys, it's been a while since we checked in with the venture capital wing of DT Exclamation Point Inc., a division of Omnicore International. That's right, because if you check the wiki, check the lore, we were acquired <laughs> in late 2022 <laughs> by a massive conglomerate. That tracks. So after checking back with the venture capital wing, I'm happy to report that the general implosion of cryptocurrency and its fly by night marketplaces have not affected the meteoric success of the houseboat grouse note <laughs> let me tell you it's great first off you said it backwards second off that's a great thing to hear ha- grouse boat house note nope grouse note houseboat grouse note you could have only done it so many wrong ways <laughs> <laughs> there are 16 combinations you may remember from our episode about cryptocurrency i do not remember what episode number that was because i didn't write it down anyway moving on <laughs> it'll be linked in the show notes <laughs> yeah we'll probably link it or whatever So you can imagine the douche suits are raking in millions and they wanted to capitalize on this by sucking up other Web3 disasters. And so they've set their sights on Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse. That's right, guys. We're doing a metaverse episode. (laughs) Woo. Yeah. Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse sounds like a game you find at the top of the $5 bargain bin. (laughs) Matt has that game on Wii U. Matt has Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse on Wii U. Well, I tried to buy Sid Meier's Civilization, and this is what I had at home. Mark Zuckerberg's Zuckerberg's metaverse in 20 years will definitely be the theme of a scratcher. At least one lottery scratcher. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, speaking of, not to date this episode, but didn't they like just announce they're shutting down Metaverse? So they did, and that's actually we're gonna get into it. And that's I have it written here in the notes. So okay, well, excuse me for not. We built it into the lore of this. episode. We built it into the lore. I kid you not, we built it in the lore of this episode. We did the thing where podcasts will reference a celebrity, then the celebrity dies when we planned this episode to involve the Metaverse. This was a this was a happy accident. This is news to me, and I. I'm blown away. Yeah, it's pretty wild. So just to quickly summarize where we are today and how the heck we got here. Most people probably remember back in October of 2021, Facebook's parent company officially announced the new rebranding as Meta to coincide with this new guiding light that Zuck and the rest of the company would be headed towards, which is, of course, the metaverse. Now, Somebody out there might be asking, what is the metaverse? And realistically, nobody really knows. Everybody has an idea of what they think it is. But really what it is, it is it is a meaningless word. It is representative of a digital world that is basically a shitty corporatized Ready Player One, right? Like, it's like, what is a, a place that we could all go in digital? Something, something VR, something, something e-commerce. Blah. That also, yeah, had like non-fungible space, like had yeah. digital real estate you could buy. It was it was everything yeah. you hate dialed up. It's a, it's just a lot of pitches, right? It's just a lot of like flimsy pitches. I don't know who the person is in 2023 that doesn't know what the metaverse is. I want to be that person. Right. Me too. <laughs> I know. I wish I know. like in the same way that you meet a friend who is like, oh, I'm about to start watching Breaking Bad. Like I want to be... <laughs> The person who does not have the knowledge of what the metaverse is trying to be. I feel like it's worth explaining this stuff because, again, there has to be people out there that aren't chronically online like we are. You know, sure. Name one. But but I can't. (laughs) I physically can't. My parents. I can't. Yeah. So the thing about the metaverse is that it was already invented 20 years ago in the form of Second Life. It's been around for a long, long, long time. 
after this announcement, we didn't really hear much about it until August of last year, 2022, when you guys remember this, when Meta released a promotional image of their first experience named Horizon Worlds, which this image is wild. It features like this like shitty me, like Nintendo <laughs> me looking version of Zuckerberg standing in front of a shitty like low res Eiffel Tower that's two feet tall. It's really bad. Uh, my favorite, there's a bunch of tweets that went out about it, but my favorite is like, this looks like a bargain bin game called World Baby that should have came out in 2001. <laughs> it's like, perfect. World Baby. <laughs> I also own that game on Wii. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so a few months later in October of 22, Meta released more updates featuring a more realistic Zuck avatar, a Zuck avatar, if you will. I will not. I won't. I never, no one <laughs> no, will. No, no one will. Along with the exciting news that, gasp, now there are legs, because there was a whole <laughs> video of Zuckerberg's avatar jumping up and down, and that was it. That was Horizon Worlds. Well, that was the big criticism from the first one, is like, yeah. you spent how many billions of dollars <laughs> and you don't even have legs? Well, yeah. it's so funny, too, because like that obviously made this do what it's trying to do. But at no point in time did they ever say, like, well, they need legs. Like, they probably just thought, we're going to build such a cool thing where they can be in, like, a rainforest or the Eiffel Tower. No one's going to want legs. And then all the internet nerds yeah. are like, hey, where's our legs? Yeah, it's great. No one would have cared if there weren't legs. That's the wrong problem to fix. <laughs> <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> it's a symptom of a larger problem. The problem being you spend a lot of money on something that's shitty. And this is all very dumb and silly. And needless to say, the world was excruciatingly underwhelmed with meta and horizon worlds in general may i remind everybody this already legitimately exists in several game properties for example you've got fortnite fortnite you can just like be goku right you've got second life which you can live a whole you life can get married and you can live a whole ass separate life in second life and world of warcraft which we talked about on the show extensively right these are all ex real examples of how the metaverse actually is and has been for years so since then, news about Horizon Worlds has gone dark, other than reports of its very own designers refusing to interact with it, even because they hated it so much. Perfect. <laughs> Yikes. And this is what's wild is, while literally while I was writing this the other day, I was just looking up news articles, and it was a fresh news article from earlier, from last week as we were recording. Basically, the future of the metaverse is, let's say, questionable at best. Um, according to a recent statement, uh, Zuckerberg and his team of Imagineers, which I'm calling, um, have <laughs> pretty much shifted gears entirely away from the metaverse in general and have just gone full fledged toward AI and like chatbot, chat GPT mm. and that kind of thing, which they're just they're just following the trends, right? Which like they're following mm -hmm. the cool. trends. Sure. It is not surprising to learn that the people working on meta on the metaverse on Horizon Worlds hated using Horizon Worlds. Yeah. Because if I'm not mistaken, the big sell to other companies was going to be like biometrics tracking in relation to productivity, like eyeball tracking. And yeah. like, oh, it's some real shit. Yucky. Yeah, it's dystopian as fuck. The example I saw, it was it would like your signs are showing you're getting sleepy. Go take a 15 minute nap in the nap pod or something like just <laughs> just awful. It's super gross. Yeah. Yeah. Just zero privacy. Um. The thing that they were also focused on was like e-commerce, like going to buy groceries at Walmart in the metaverse, which like, OK, cool. Yeah. And and doing like meetings and stuff at work. Right. Like, it's just, just like cool. More Zoom calls. Knowing all that, our VCs took the opportunity to circle like vultures around the dead, decaying bodies of Meta's metaverse and started picking it off bone by exceedingly bland bone. All that is to say that I'm happy to report that DT exclamation point Inc. are now the proud owners of the entire metaverse. <laughs> we did it. The whole thing. We did it. The whole, the whole thing. damn thing. The whole damn thing. It's just us four and the execs hanging out yep. in the multiverse. And honestly, it was pretty It's like 900 bucks. It's pretty surprisingly oh, wow. cheap. Yeah. I imagine yeah. the metaverse is like a fucked up little mutant chicken in the corner of the Facebook office. It's just like, <laughs> kill me. <laughs> Father help. Yeah. Well, in order to in order to turn that mutant chicken into a swine, we're gonna need a new flagship game that will serve as the killer app for this new vir virtual experience. Since, as we've discussed, no one is interested in spending hundreds of dollars on equipment just to buy shit from Walmart. And what better and more poetic way to really sync meta than to utilize an old Facebook game as the way to turn this thing around? 
So there's our prompt. <laughs> I've called the best of the best in virtual world design today to help find that unforgettable metaverse Facebook game experience. Welcome to the stage, Matt, World of Guns, Disassembly, <laughs> Cole, Todd, CSI, Crime City, Thomas, and Kyle, Journey to Jesus, colon, The Calling, Harper. <laughs> World of Guns disassembly is what you get when you put America into like an English to German translator and then translate it back to English. <laughs> Guys, uh, <laughs> it's really good. Well done. Okay. Which of those do you think are real games that were available at one point on Facebook? CSI Crime City. I was going to say, I know, real. I know CSI Crime City is, or at least there was a CSI game. Is this a D all the above, Andrew? This is a D all the above. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Man, we're going to talk about Facebook games today. And just before we before we get into it, man, how fake do Facebook games sound? <laughs> wow, Man, dude. I like, I, the thing that, that got, and we'll probably talk more about this in the post show, preparing for this, I had to put myself, I had to watch YouTube videos of Facebook Yikes. games. Because, Same, like, dude. <laughs> I, like, have very, cog- I've been very, like, conscious of not getting on Facebook near as much because, like, I only use it to track friends' birthdays. And at yeah, this it's point, it's a cesspool otherwise. Well, and at this point, like, I do two things. One, when I see it's a friend's birthday that I care about, I put it in my phone now. Not a question. Yep. The other thing is that the longer that you stay logged off of Facebook, the more desperately Facebook sends you notifications of the most benign in name. shit. Yeah. Yeah. The stupidest, like, you have a friend from college that you, like, reasonably like their posts. If they comment on someone else's post, it'll be like, so-and-so commented on a post. And you're like, why? Why would I ever care about that? That's nothing. I'm off Facebook enough that I now get like, so-and-so added an image. It's like, right. Great. Cool. So as Twitter has decayed, I have gone back to Facebook and spent oh, man, more no. time there. That, just <laughs> oh, as an observer, not as one who interacts. I'll talk about this a lot more in the post. Matt, show. it'll be it'll be different this time. Though. So it's if evolving. you want to hear about that, go to patreon.com slash debate this cast. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't want to hear more about that, so let's jump in. Okay, guys, which game originally playable exclusively through Facebook are you going to recommend to be the new face of the metaverse? Any game that you could play on Facebook would do, even if it doesn't exist right now. It just had to have some point. So starting with Matt, tell me what that game is, what it was about, and a high-level summary of how you're going to rework it for the Magical Mystery Metaverse. Hey, uh... I heard uh I heard your metaverse got a problem. And uh I heard you were you were looking for somebody to fix that problem for you. Well, good news. We called the mob and the mob is here. And I'm going to talk about mob Wait, wars today. Oh my god. <laughs> you called called the mob? We called, I the, called mob. the mob. Like 1-800 the mob. 1-800 the bees. mob. Phone number to reach the mob. Yes, exactly. 1-800 the mob. And listeners, Matt prepped us by saying I'm doing a bit that's never enough prep. <laughs> and within two words, I was like, oh, okay. I got his bit. I know I know where we're going. Find us at mob.com. <laughs> so for those, and there will, there absolutely, there's going to be more bit. But before we get to the bit, sure. for those who don't remember Mob Wars, you may be hearing that and thinking like a, a Berenstein, Berenstein bear situation. Like Mob Wars doesn't sound right. You might remember a game that was much more popular called Mafia Wars. I sure do, And we're not going to talk about (laughs) Mafia Wars today. We have Mafia Wars at home. (laughs) (laughs) Because when I started researching Mafia Wars, I learned that Mob Wars, in a very mob-esque move, was A, the original, and B, sued Mafia Wars off of the internet. Hell yeah. So, we are here to talk about the mob today, and... um, I, I heard your metaverse is in trouble, and you come to me on the day of my daughter's wedding, and we're gonna I'm we're gonna Marlon Brando. Yeah, we're gonna I'm gonna make a bunch of <laughs> shitty mob puns, and we're gonna talk about Mob Wars today. Do you remember the gameplay of Mob Wars at all? No, no, no. I just, nobody does. Um, I I would like to just state that I've never played a Facebook game. I've never interfaced with a Facebook game. All I know about Facebook games is that you have to poke, annoy your friends to make progress. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Mob Wars is is 
what Facebook called a role-playing game or a light role-playing game. Great. It's really more of an idle game. You start at a low rank, you do jobs, quote unquote, which is pretty much you just click a button uh, <laughs> and then you you distribute wealth out to your your mob and then you wait for more jobs to come in to do more things and climb the ranks of the mob. And it evolved the way you would expect. Eventually, they had families that you could join and then you could raid other mobs and it turned into a whole thing because this game it was a it was a clicker game it's a clicker game and it is a clicker game that is still very active today in the year of our lord really? 2023 wow running 15 years strong. on facebook uh not on facebook anymore it is now at its own it has thing. its own url it's mob.com <laughs> well mob mob. wars the original mob wars shut down in 2018 and was basically relaunched with like a new school runescape-esque launch of hell yeah mob wars colon something if you were a fan of the original mob wars right we've got news for you (laughs) yeah vanilla mob wars coming 2024 (laughs) mob wars Wars la casa nostra the game that launched in 2018 okay it's got a 4.6 out of 5 on google play is that the new house that means nothing todd (laughs) how about you (laughs) so a top performing Facebook game that, as we all know, has won numerous awards, um, citation earlier in this podcast, throughout its 12-year-plus <laughs> lifespan, Farmville. Farmville is going to be, it's it's a peak MMO experience, as we've already agreed upon, and it is going to be the peak experience in Metaverse. Now, let me just explain Farmville real quick. Uh, Andrew said he never played any games. You other two, have you played Farmville? I have played Farmville. I hard refuse to take that drug. I've never played Farmville. I have also played Farmville. I would have guessed on at least one grave that Matt spent a chunk of his life <laughs> as defining his personality by Farmville. I would have Matt guessed Matt lost that. 18 mm. years of his life mm. to Farmville. Yeah. yeah. No. Nope. Not me. Okay. So I, I did play Farmville as well. Farmville was also a clicker game. Log in, click the crops. The whole whole deal. You you get this farm, you plant your crops, there's a time delay, you harvest the crops, repeat. That's the drug. We would all stop in our dorm lobby and like <laughs> get our laptops out and like get our vegetables and then go to then head off to dinner at the campus center. Cause that was like eight hours from when we did it that morning. <laughs> right. This was this was like peak 2007, 2008, 2009 Facebook. 2009 it launched, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So so we're gonna change it a little bit. So instead of now being this like SimCity style like omnipotent hand that pokes at crops to plant and harvest, you yourself will be transported to your own budding farm that you can interact with from the comfort of your own living room. Just think about it. You're going to be able to sow your oats and pet your goats while standing amongst the (laughs) land that you inherited from your grandfather because every single farming game you've ever played starts with your grandfather giving you the farm. (laughs) Am I dying or has Todd used sow your oats and pet your goats before in an episode it feels like it's been used before (laughs) i can neither confirm nor deny (laughs) but i will tell you i will bring it back for later episodes now that i know the crowd loves it (laughs) it's just so when you do this you're going to be using your meta approved hand sensor i don't know how meta works i don't know what that is i think that meta knows i think it i think it's oculus i think it's oculus rift it's just oculus rift because i think meta owns oculus yes yeah, sure. So your meta approved hand sensor controller bands that I assume go around your mm-hmm. wrists. I don't sure. know. They check your pulse. They make sure you're breathing. They tell you when to take your naps and your nap pods <laughs> to <laughs> interact with your plants on their designated cooldown time. So here's the thing. People play games because they're bored. I get that. They want to like pass time, you know, stimulate their brains. Yeah. None of that is an issue anymore because those green beans you planted by walking around your living room are on a 15 second harvest cooldown. <laughs> and so you're going to be strolling through your virtual farm in your living room, harvesting and planting and harvesting and planting to collect farm coins and farm bucks until your heart is content. This is it. This is peak meta, and we're going to do it here. Wait. <laughs> but yeah. Wait. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that you fixed the major problem in Farmville, but now you've did, just... Did I? <laughs> I? I think you have in the, in the... in the. Well, I mean, 
you could debate if you're not interested in the like idle portion or the the waiting portion. Oh, I would debate. There's no problem to be fixed, but yeah, keep going. Okay, fair. <laughs> By that extension, you've just reverse engineered VR Harvest Moon. Oh no, this is different. How <laughs> Harvest Moon goes in like goes on a Harvest Moon has a clock and there are seasons and all that. This is this is <laughs> Farmville's different. Yeah, Farmville's different. different. Just Farm during the day. Different. Farmville's different. Like I said, your crops are, you know, specifically the green beans that I'm talking about here so far. A whole lot of crops we'll talk about later. The green beans specifically that you get at level one when you start, those are a 15-second cooldown. You just pop right through those babies. That's quick. Wait, okay, hold on, hold on. (laughs) So are you saying that you have replaced the, like, idle portion of Farmville with Overwatch-style cooldowns? Is that what you're saying to me? Like, I, as a farmer, have abilities. I don't think Overwatch gets to claim that style. <laughs> the only game is... Just let him go. It's the only game he knows, guys. <laughs> right. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm making fun of Todd. Get, don't getting a lot of Overwatch game. vibes here, guys. I'm right. playing anything but Overwatch. <laughs> all right. To put it to put it in words understood by all, the green bean cooldown is not the same thing as Bap's immortality lamp. It's not the same. <laughs> the green beans are what you unlock at level one. That's a quick harvest. That's a quick plant, quick harvest. That's how all clicker games are. You've always got the low level thing. Then you just pop in all the time. Now, listen, we'll get to corn later. (laughs) Corn, it's like an hour long cooldown. You got to come back later for that. You can't. Now, maybe you just want to stand around in the metaverse and watch your corn grow. I don't know what kind of pervert you are, but (laughs) your green beans, 15 seconds, bing, bang, boom. Todd, you are the most provocative drug dealer. I'm sorry. While you said that sentence, I planted and harvested more green beans. Great. All right, Kyle, talk about something else, please. (laughs) All right, Andrew. Where the other two today have brought you popular franchises, I bring you a legacy with universal and timeless design. Because I bring you a game that started off Facebook, but was launched into Empire status because of Facebook. And that game, Andrew, is Bejeweled. Why settle for engagement or clicks or microtransactions when I can offer you the ability to control all of it, right down to the root of what this is all about, power. Because execs, (laughs) PopCap Games and I are offering you the ability to control the money of the vast new digital frontier with Bejewels, the official currency of the metaverse. Oh, God. Oh, that's dangerous. Like that. Well, you have certainly piqued my interest, Kyle. <laughs> because I missed the describe the game, Bejeweled is a matching game. You batch three colors or more of jewels in a row, and then they go away, and you earn points. And you do that until you, the heat death of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I'm curious, what is the Facebook component of Bejeweled? Bejeweled Blitz was a more a more fast paced version with with quicker power ups and like bigger multipliers than Bejeweled's 1, 2, or 3, which came out okay. previously. The original trilogy, you mean? The original trilogy. Was there like a, you have to poke your friends to be able to play this game component, or did they not? Oh, ab- yeah, okay. yeah, you could play so many times, and then you could send out invites or pokes or whatever to okay. get one more time, and then like, yeah. Got it. Okay, so all three of your games incorporate some sort of like massive social component. Absolutely. Got it. Well, that brings me to my next prompt, which is to say the thing about Facebook games was that they were just versions of shitty old freeware flash games that you could play anywhere online. But as we've noted with these three games, the added twist of bugging the absolute hell out of all of your friends with notifications and invitations and other inane requests. You know, social gaming. (laughs) So guys, how are you going to incorporate social dynamics into your metaverse experience to ensure that the friends that you constantly hit up to join your mob or water your plants will want to go throw their routers in the trash. Matt. Well, see, I'm glad you're already talking about the mob because the mob's got all the answers. Oh, he's doing you. the voice. I forgot about that. Yeah, I told you there was going to be a bit and the bit is here. <laughs> he's like Rizzo the Rat. <laughs> <laughs> he's exactly like Rizzo the Rat. I'm not trapped in here with you. <laughs> Come play mob wars. <laughs> Dog caucus in the streets. <laughs> anyway, we know you want to do the social gaming, and that's why we understand that the mob family's got to be your way of life. 
You got to get every single person you know to join your mob family <laughs> if you want to build the mob to be the greatest that it can be. And that's what you want, right? I can't focus on what you're saying because your voice is so <laughs> distracting. Yes, yes, that is what I want, indubitably. So it'll be easy to build the social integration of this game. Every single thing you do, you're going to have to bring somebody else along with you to do it. You're going to create people to start doing those things for you. We call that your downline. Once you establish yourself a downline, then you can begin to climb the social rank ladders of the mob. I kind of lost the accent there. I don't do New York very well. It's okay. I kind of feel like you were, by the end there, you're trying to sell me to buy a Wahlburgers franchise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay. A little too far north there. Yeah, I'm still here Boston. comparing the mob to Mary Kay dealer, so keep going. So I'm going to lose the accent. So I can I can complete this explanation because this is Perfect. where it gets important, right? You are joining the mob. That's the game. What do you get from that? All sorts of things and rewards, but that doesn't matter. What matters is the betterness and the health and the growth of the mob. You care about the mob because the mob gives you what you want and what you need, and you want to share that with other people. So... When you want to move your way up the ladder, not only do you have to complete certain tasks and acquire certain power levels and finish certain mob jobs, you not only have to finish enough mob jobs, you have to have enough people in your mob family to do mob jobs for you. So then once they have enough people, you can climb up the ladder of the mob. Until you get to the top where you're so socially integrated, you've got your hands and everybody's downline that you are the king of the mob. I have a question. Yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> the person, does the person that passes out the mob jobs, is his name Bob? Is it Bob who gives out the mob jobs? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You get mob, mob jobs job Bob. Mob job Bob. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is he a slob? The slob, uh, mob, mob job, <laughs> mob job Bob who's real slob? Todd, I see you are a scholar of the same rhyme zone page that I am. Look, <laughs> <laughs> guys, he's just looking for someone to rob. Um, so yeah. what, Look, what, you, what, <laughs> what does a mob job for Bob entail? Like, what is the function of a mob job? <laughs> What's, you got it. You got a slob. You got to touch his knob. Like on the <laughs> <laughs> I thought the real answer was going to be, I can't tell you, you're not part of the mob yet. But Matt's answer is also good. Yeah. No, there's all great. sorts of there's all sorts of different mob jobs, and they well, the mob jobbies. Yeah, I mean they are integrated all throughout the metaverse. Listen, I don't want to give away too much of my answer for question three, but I will tell you that mob jobs require you to be part of other things in the metaverse. We want to build this game into the larger metaversal culture. So maybe one of your mob jobs is to rob Charles Schwab. <laughs> to do that, you're going to have to get yourself into a Charles Schwab Facebook page. There will be all sorts of mob jobs for you to do. I Gobs and gobs, I would imagine. Gobs, gobs of mob yeah. jobs from Mob Job Bob. <laughs> And they don't all include robbing Charles Schwab. Oh, this is hell. What have I done? We've never said that. We've said a lot of dumb shit. Oh, God. Oh, boy. Uh, all right. <laughs> cool. Mob, mob jobs. Uh, Todd, what about you? What do you even do with this? I don't know how you follow that. So dumb. Okay. Uh, social, social gaming, social integration. Cool. All right, so Farmville, it's already had this nailed down. Why are we going to ruin a good thing when Farmville was already, like, leading in this area? So, first off, much like the original Farmville, you should, or you can, and you should, invite your friends to set down roots in the spaces adjacent to your own farm. You know, you have your own, your own space, and when you start Farmville, there's always, like, the barriers of the space say, hey, like, invite a friend to, to be in you know, your farm neighbor. And, like, why wouldn't your friends want to be farm neighbors? Like, that's just a whole thing. In fact. Seems like a win-win. Well, yeah. That's just original Farmville. That original, was just well, a feature of original Farmville. Well, we're going farther now because meta is invasive, right? So if you have <laughs> if you have your friend's meta-approved email address, you know, the one they use to sign up, you could just go ahead and put their farm there. 
<laughs> They've already agreed. They gave us that permission when they signed up. You just put them there. And that's what's nice about this because you're creating community. And once they're there, they can help you plant and harvest your crops. You know, I, I had said earlier that corn's going to take an hour. So once you've got that five minute crop, which is probably eggplants, I don't know. I'm going to run out of crops if, we, if you make me keep naming them. You're three crops in, Todd. You're going to run out of crops. I am just saying, like, much like mob crimes, there's a lot of, co- there's a lot of crops and I just, just don't want to get ahead of myself. Think of more vegetables. There are more than three vegetables. Okay, name, name five. And so, Lettuce. Here, carrots. No, it's barely. Also, okay. So here's the deal. Once you planted those five minute eggplants, you can walk over to your neighbor's and you can help them pick those darn green beans. Those those 15 second green beans. Well, you picked all those. Oh, eggplants are done. Get your friend in their in their meta hands to come on over and start <laughs> start picking those eggplants too. And here's the other thing. I know you're going to want some baby goats after you're done sowing the moats. And and you're going to want baby goats because the people playing this are either millennial farmers or boomers and I got to believe those two people are going to be into having baby goats. And if you want baby goats, if you want access to baby goats, you have to have two locked in adjacent neighbors and you're going to need for friends to get signed up or you're going to have to sign them up, I guess. And and here's the <laughs> thing. The longer you think about that actual setup, this is Todd coming out of the bit, the shittier that gets because those two friends probably couldn't be adjacent to each other. So they couldn't get the baby goats. They have to bring more people in they have to bring another person in. Yeah. It's real bad. But yeah, you're going to need two adjacent neighbors. You sign them up. You're you got farm neighbors. You want that decorative veranda on that simple old farm home? Well, you're going to need to have four friends adjacent to your farm. And even then, a benefit is that they get to physically visit your farm and use the power of friendship and also the power of meta and also the power of their physical hands to literally help you build it plank by plank. They're going to have to use their hands to build the physical veranda on your house. And this is all ultimately building to before you know it you could have a fully functioning commune full commune where you're making you know harvesting vegetables for one another you got goats doing goat things that's the extent (laughs) of those examples are you suggesting online Mm -hmm. digital communism i might be kyle okay is that gonna be a problem for you we're gonna end up on some lists if we're not careful (laughs) we're gonna end up on some lists all right let me get to the let me get to the actual tangible but actually not tangible because it's the meta world example here so once you've built your fully functioning commune of close friends you could build a brewing barn if you have six friends connected you could build a pickling cellar if you have 10 friends or just How many example. sides does your farm have? A lot of, <laughs> lot of sides. Um, these are really just friends that are connected at this point. It just doesn't matter. You're it's a big farm. You got a pickling cellar with 10 friends. Or you could even ultimately install a tire swing if you have 10 friends, but one of those 10 have purchased the city building permit battle pass. So you've really got a lot of <laughs> options with Farmville in meta that all we got focuses our on, yeah. <laughs> it all focuses on community. Wow. Because every farm has a tire swing, I guess. I don't know. Sure. If you don't have the tire swing, you can't grow green beans. It's like, you well, no, you gotta have to the, green green beans, beans. the green beans come first. It's more like, What's what's another stupid vegetable? Name quick, Andrew. Name five more vegetables. Carrots. Rutabaga. No, you already. Rutabaga is a good Rhubarb. one. Rhubarb. Rhubarb. That's that's okay. That's also a vegetable. Alfalfa. That's a good one. Onions. All right. Chives. Didn't know we were so hard for vegetables around here. <laughs> we're a pro produce podcast. <laughs> this is a a normal <laughs> amount of vegetables, Todd. Which is why Farmville <laughs> in the meta verse is gonna just skyrocket here at DT Exclamation Point Inc. That. It was surprisingly anti-capitalist for a meta proposal. <laughs> well, that's it's true. Sh- it's a move. Sh- don't stop, stop. <laughs> you're, you're, you're scaring the investors. <laughs> Kyle, bring these investors back on page. All right, Andrew. So, like I said, we are setting up Bejewels to be the metaverse's currency. And to do that, we need to first put the currency in the hands of the people. So to keep people trapped, I mean, imprisoned, I mean, engaged, every interaction within the metaverse will earn users an amount of red gems. Every like, every click, every (laughs) link, every post, you will earn some amount of red gems. 
When you earn 240 red gems, you can convert those into three orange gems, which you can then take to the arcade <laughs> to play for a chance to win more red gems. Oh, so you can yeah. convert your red gems into orange gems and um, use that to play more games like Bejeweled, which will earn you more red <laughs> gems. You're you're earning money by playing games in this world. Wait, it's you're great. earning you're earning money by playing the game to play the game more. Shut up, shut up, Andrew. He's getting to it. <laughs> yeah. When players have thirty five orange gems, Andrew, they can turn twelve of them into five yellow gems. Yellow <laughs> gems can then be used to purchase likes for your users to give out to your friends, family, and corporate overlords, which will in turn earn you more red gems back. Oh man, I get the red gems back? When you go out into the metaverse and, and interact with um, other posts, you sure can, Todd. Oh, hell yeah. So then yellow gems can also be converted into green gems at a rate of 99.99 .99 to one. Green gems will then be used to trade for goods and services with other users, like we use currency in the real world. We aren't handing out the straight up trade this for goods and services money for free but we give you the route to get there <laughs> there's a conversion rate for sure that makes me think of like all of the like marvel snap has one where it's like yes. somebody <laughs> has gone through there's a public facing google doc like it's a massive excel sheet that is like all of the conversion rates and it's yes. like here is oh, the maximum no. amount of that you would have to spend to get the maximum amount of this currency it's ridiculous i tried to do the math for a second to figure out what the ultimate exchange rate here was kyle and i couldn't do it I drew these numbers out of a hat. Like, you weren't supposed to do the math, Todd. I, no, I get the bit. But I was trying to figure out exactly how many red gems it takes to get a green gem. And it's such an unfathomable number that I gave up. Yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> it's, it's like trying to get a... to get a Here, this one's for Matt. It's like trying to get an Overwatch 2 skin without paying real money. Yeah, it sure mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Thanks for bringing me back in on that one. Todd. I appreciate <laughs> it. You're welcome. We gotcha. <laughs> All right. Well, engineering virtual social leisure between friends is great, but it's only going to bring in so much money. Zuckerberg, visionary that he is, once looked at this technology that can allow people to literally see or do anything one can imagine and asked, well, what if they use this for Zoom meetings and for buying groceries at Walmart? The man knows how to get the dollars flowing, you guys. <laughs> So tell me how what do you... people really love doing? Yeah, participating in Zoom meetings mm -hmm. and yeah. buying groceries. And at buying Walmart. groceries. <laughs> what if we could make a little bit of money every time they do that? And talking out of their very human, not alien mouths. That's... Sweet baby rays. Sweet, sweet baby rays. <laughs> Gotta get the sweet baby rays. So tell me how you guys are going to integrate an innovative e-commerce experience that allows your users to experience the mundanity of everyday life inside of a virtual one. Well, it's uh, it's pretty easy here in the uh, in the mob. You you know the mob just takes a little cut off the top, just just a little sliver, just a little bit off the top. Daddy gets a taste. <laughs> it's, it's a great e-commerce experience. Everybody gets involved. You know, you will take a little bit off the top of everybody in your mob family in turn. The mob family above you will take a little bit off the top of your earnings. And I hear you saying, well, where do these earnings come from? Well, they come from, A, the mob jobs, the mob jobs you get from Bob, and B, <laughs> mm, right. also, you take a little off the top from other things, because the mob is everywhere, and the mob is involved in a lot of things. So, you know, say you're in a Facebook plant exchange group, and somebody says, I would love to take that succulent from you. And they say, great, that'll be $5. Well, the mob gets 25 cents of that $5. Just goes to the mob. The mob provides <laughs> protection why? to all of you. Because it provides protection to these groups, Andrew. And the people who ask why don't stick around long enough to find <laughs> don't out get the, the protection. answers. Mm -hmm. Wait, is the mob just the square credit card reader? Is that what the mob is? <laughs> There is an extra fee for using credit cards. Yes. <laughs> We're just taking a little cut off the top. Matt, are you saying I could do enough mob jobs that I could order some kebabs? Mm. You could. You could order you could order kebabs if you did enough mob jobs. Mm. There's actually a new restaurant in town. It's called Bob's Kebabs. Same Bob that gives out the mob jobs. <laughs> Same Bob. So you can get one of Bob's mm. Bob Kebabs. You could get one of Bob's Kebabs if you get Bob's a Mob's bob Kebabs job from Bob. <laughs> uh. Talking about kebabs is making me so hungry. I could just break down and sob right now. <laughs> uh, Todd, what about you? Right. This is so stupid. So 
building just a whole ass farm, it's not easy. It's not cheap. Anyone who has played the three top farming games of Harvest Moon, Stardew Valley, or number one top fan favorite Facebook game for the past decade, Farmville, will tell you that, <laughs> obviously. So we're going to find just a good use for those farm bucks that you just naturally earn while you're playing this game. And then you're going to be able to spend them for real benefit here on your virtual farm that is not real. So those who lack work ethic, you do have the opportunity, you know, if if you're not willing to put in the hard sweat to earn your farm bucks, you can just purchase them. And farm bucks, just to get this out of the way, $5 for a farm buck, or you can get five farm bucks for $25. So with that pesky city slicker business out of the way let's move on that's just that's just nothing (laughs) so any successful farmer knows that you need the right tools for the job and just a real can-do attitude to get that work done so one of the things that can be bought using your farm bucks at the in-game tractor supply store is is just (laughs) tools that are going to help you so so think of it like this so typically when you play these farming games and specifically this one using your your real internet hands You have to interact crop by crop to harvest. But if you upgrade to big old shovel for five farm bucks, you can pick and plant four squares at a time. That's just easy. That's smart. And for 25 farm bucks, well, that'll get you just a little tractor. That lets you go nine squares at a time. So much more efficient on your farm. And a good use for the farm bucks that you've earned by working hard on your farm and I, you kind of see where we're going with this one, mm-hmm. that anyone can play this newly upgraded Farmville without spending a cent. They don't have to spend a penny. But, you know, those who really want to take pride in their farm, they're going to find <laughs> creative investments for their farm bucks. This is feeling eerily Scientology adjacent. No, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, let me, let me, because like you're thinking about the conversion, like $5 for a farm buck or, you know, five for $25, whatever. And you're thinking, five dollars for of money. Are operating Thetan. Yeah, sure. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I want to make it clear, like farm bucks are very accessible. So each player starts off their farm with five farm bucks. They are then quite literally forced to pull out their virtual wallet using their virtual hands and spend those five farm bucks during the tutorial. They just want you to see how that mechanic works. They just, they showed you, you used them, great. After that, players are rewarded during each harvest cycle with an additional farm buck. Now, you may be worried that that's not fast enough. You know, a a farming cycle is a whole season. And some people are going to think, man, one farm buck every like three to four months, that doesn't seem like enough. We hear you loud and clear, dedicated farmers. By completing every daily and weekly challenge for four weeks straight, farmers can earn yet another farm buck. Before you know it, you're going to be buying custom skins and sprays to truly turn your virtual farm into the best one for a virtual county mile with all these farm bucks that you can just earn so quickly, so easily. Without spending a penny. You don't need to spend any money. Just rolling in farm bucks. <laughs> wow. You want that tire swing, don't you? <laughs> I can't help but notice. So this started out as a very like. Good game. Anti-capitalist commune kind of situation where it was like everybody mm. is just kind of collectively like we're all going to hang out and have fun. Right. And then you've and then you've introduced capitalism, but in its most toxic concentration well, and, uh, i think you i think you missed what i said you don't have to spend any <laughs> human dollars yeah you can earn your farm bucks easy and you could have that that tractor what 25 farm bucks and you earn like i mean fast earners are gonna earn like eight farm bucks a year i can't do the math but that's pretty fast i think you're gonna get it pretty quick and it's gonna be worthwhile with all that hard work you put in sure I didn't even tell you about the seasonal events. You don't even know. <laughs> Please. Nah, it's fine. All right. <laughs> nah. <it's> fine. <laughs> Kyle, what do you got? All right, Andrew. So we plan to overhaul the e-commerce experience with Bejewels. And we plan to do that by making Bejewels the only way to exchange currency for goods and services while on the metaverse. No dollars here, no pounds, no euros. It's all bejewels or nothing. So everyone knows exactly how much money they're getting, no matter who they trade with in the world. Now, Andrew, I'm sure you have asked by now, 
how can I convert my real American dollars into bejewels to jumpstart my life in the new digital frontier? Please, <laughs> I'm, I'm burning. Yeah, yeah, we've got an answer for you. At the Hypercube Exchange, users will be able to transfer their currency from anywhere in the world into bejewels for a small exchange fee. Where's that name come from? That is a power up in the, mm. in the bejewels canon, bejeweled canon. <laughs> Once we get a representative number of our users to accept Bejewels as the real currency that it is, we'll fudge, I mean forge, I mean analyze that data and use it to convince as many other online retailers that Bejewels are not only the safest way to exchange currency for goods and services online, but they are also the most profitable. Once we have enough people and businesses using Bejewels, we will start offering out options for loans or investment packages so you can get more Bejewels on your account <laughs> without converting American dollars into Bejewels. We'll turn their green gems into blue gems, which earn interest but can't be spent without converting them back into green gems. Or we'll turn them into purple gems, whose value you can pledge to corporations and may bring you back some dividends in the form of more green gems based on their success. Or you could choose to convert your green gems into white gems, which will mature until the user is ready to retire in the multiverse. <laughs> a fully matured white gem can be sold back to Meta for significantly more green gems than they paid for in the beginning. This is incredible. Now, of course, at each of one of these conversions, Meta will take a small fee, a tax, if you will, because with Bejewels, we plan to help Meta turn into the first fully digital sovereign nation. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait, no. hold on. Hold up. With Bejewels as its federal reserve. <laughs> that was said took a turn. Yeah, I sure checked did. out for just a brief moment and feel like I, I stepped out of the room to grab a coffee and I feel like I missed something. I don't think you did. Kyle made his own sub economy and is taking his proverbial ball and going home. I mean, with a currency's got to start somewhere. <laughs> what a tagline. Incredible. People didn't always want the dollar. Yeah. I would argue your points, but pretty much is aligned with <laughs> Meta's company motto as a whole. It's true. Wow. Well, um, as as we tend to do by the, by the third prompt, I have a lot to think about. We're going to take a quick break, but before we do, I've got one more thing for you all to consider. So we talked a little bit about Zuckerberg's imagineering vision of doing office Zoom meetings inside of a virtual world, which is just it's like, what a pervert, what, a what pervert. an <laughs> absolute asshole, what an absolute pervert. So we're going to need to generate a little bit of that startup cash. In addition to our e-commerce findings, uh, e-commerce uh, travails, we need to partner with a massive corporation to start building a fully virtual office. So tell me, each of you, when we come back from the break, which massive corporation are we going to partner with to build the world's first fully virtual office inside of the metaverse? And we'll be back in just a moment. Have you ever thought about movies like Con Air, City of Angels, Kiss of Death, these Nick Cage movies, Todd? Well, yeah, yeah, they are. But you know what's different okay. about some Nick Cage movies? I literally think about Nick Cage movies every day of my life. What's different about these Nick Cage movies, Todd? It's not those ones. It's, it's just Nick Cage movies in general? It's the Wicker Man. Because what you see is you got a cage to contain your Nicks. And that is what <laughs> Manscaped does for you. All right. Oh, wow. <sighs> okay. That would have worked All for right. Conair as well. Explain. He's a prisoner. The, the plane is full of convicts. Con air. It's the whole thing. I'll tell you what the whole thing is, Kyle. <laughs> Support for Debate This is brought to you by Manscaped, who is, in fact, the best in below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped's performance package is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Hey, we talk a lot about Manscaped, and we appreciate their support for this show. I think the last time we talked about this, I said I had just bought the Beard Hedger, 
highly suggest it. I get a lot of targeted ads for this. Thanks, Manscaped. It's pretty good. <laughs> Ignore the targeted ads. It's like a dude on the golf course talking about how big it should be. It's a strange energy. <laughs> but the beard hedger is very good. Ignore the targeted ads. Do not ignore this ad. Yeah, because this is, this is an targeted. ad for how you can use it. For one, it is not targeted. And for two, this is an ad I about mean, how you it's can targeted. use code debate this. Go ahead, make the joke. It's targeted toward people that like puns. Go ahead. Yeah, it is. It's targeted towards people who like puns. You can use code debate this all one word at checkout to get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. That is code debate this to get 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. TM. All right, we're back. Once again, the super secret bonus question is, which massive corporation will you partner with to build the world's first fully virtual office inside of your metaverse experience? We'll start with you, Matt. Yeah, Andrew, well, you see, we're going to be handling a lot of money here, what, through the mob wars, and that means we need a way to uh, to clean that money. So we're actually going to be partnering with longtime mob partner Papa John's, and we're gonna open <laughs> the first Papa John's money laundering and pizza serving service here in the metaverse. Because there's no way that Papa John's sure. isn't just a money laundering scheme at this point. Matt is gonna get a hit taken out on him. Mm -hmm. Not for anything up until this point, but for asserting that any self-respecting Italian mobster would eat Papa John's pizza. <laughs> that sweaty, that sweaty Papa's coming for you, Matt. <laughs> Fortunately, the voice doesn't sound very Italian, so it implies that a Boston mobster is really into <laughs> Papa John's, which might be the case. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why you went for Papa John's when Mattress Firm is the obvious answer. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one too. I almost went with Dollar General, but that felt too icky. Oh no, Dollar General operates on a predatory model of small cities. Yeah, yeah, sure do. Hey, let's save that for the post show. <laughs> Todd, what uh, what predatory company are you thinking about? Enter here our partnership with Cargill, a USA based <laughs> private global food corporation. And the largest commercial provider of crops, livestock, foodstuffs, oh, no. health products, and also financial risk management. So you see, the metaverse is all about transporting yourself to places that you could only wish to visit in real life. So obviously, we needed a partner that reflects that. <laughs> Located in Minnetonka, Minnesota, Cargo <laughs> is definitely not a mega farm corporation that is actually detrimental to the agricultural industry as we know it as a whole, and will make a great Zuck approved meta partner as they offer what I can only describe as a transformative and, in, and just fully engrossing virtual corporate office. It'll also offer virtual rolling industrial stack processing buildings. It'll also offer virtual corn shucking hoppers <laughs> and virtual animal parts processing lines for people to enter into virtually through the metaverse this is just what every home farmer i think yet nay <laughs> we think hope to one day work up to cargill <laughs> Ick. that felt bad all right it felt it bad did. but it was the right answer uh kyle all right, Andrew. So to put some faith behind Bejewels, PopCap Games has partnered with Diamond Conglomerate De Beers to be the first <laughs> jewelry <laughs> retailer and gem conglomerate to not only fully host their business conduct in the metaverse, but also to exclusively accept Bejewels for online sales of their diamonds. Perfect. De Beers. <laughs> not problematic at all. Not at all. Certainly not. Don't look up blood diamonds. <laughs> There's something about like the word bejeweled and De Beers that like I just <laughs> I feel like there's something there. And I can't like I can't get it there. And it's very funny to me. Not worth closing that circle because no. <laughs> De Beers doesn't deserve any of that. No, that's fair. No free marketing. All right. Well, um, as we 
need to do? I need to go talk to the VC. Is it the VCs? Is that what I said? Is yeah, that how I you, said this you mentioned up? you mentioned yeah. venture, venture capitalists at some point. Yeah, it's, it's venture capitalists. So me and all of the VCs are gonna go do some cocaine <laughs> in the <laughs> other room or whatever before we go and do cocaine. Uh, We're gonna go do you... some cocaine about this. <laughs> yeah, I can go do do some quick cocaine. Why don't you uh, all give me some closing statements? Yeah, I don't see how much more of a closing statement you need. It's the mob. It's tough times out there in the metaverse. It sounds like you need help from me and my brother Donnie Wahlberg at the mob. <laughs> there, there it is. It's good to know that even the mob is not recession proof. <laughs> <laughs> in 2009, we were given Farmville original vanilla classic. <laughs> what are, is Farmville a classic? A retro video game? Oh Maybe my god. Year. Oh. <laughs> Uh, feels pretty bad. In 2009, we were given the original Farmville. In 2012, we were given Farmville 2. And in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2021, we were given Farmville 3. Now I'm presenting no you the option for Farmville 4 in meta. Bring all your friends. Let's go. Let's go harvest some gourds. <laughs> Had to reference his list of vegetables. To finish <laughs> I, know, I closed that tab. I panicked. I love Wikipedia. The veg- <laughs> Wikipedia vegetables let me down. I love the idea that the the sub subhead or the subtitle of this game is "Let's go harvest some uh, let's, gourds." Let's go, let's go pick some gourds. That's that's actually when you invite a friend. That's the custom message that auto fills in case oh, you don't yes. want to type anything. Is let's go bake some gourds. Yeah, let's go. Let's go and pick uh, pick some gourds. Do some farm, <laughs> Kyle. Yeah, Andrew. Only only one of the options today promised you sovereign nationhood. And that was PopCap <laughs> Games with Bejeweled. <laughs> and that's all. I, we all know that's what you want. Fair enough. <laughs> Excellent point. All right. I said we were going to go do cocaine. So it's time, time to go do cocaine now. I'm going to go do <laughs> cocaine over here. You guys give each other good vibes. Wow. Facebook games, you guys. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is an endless well of garbage. Yeah. I think that it's really funny that all three of us made a different kind of like terrible thing that at its core is like all kind of the same thing. Like how can we just brainwash people to give us their money, which is effectively all Facebook games have ever been since their inception back in like 2008. Yeah. They were the proto like mobile game stuffed to the gills with microtransactions. Like they didn't invent any of this, but like they did it all together first. Yeah, and I, I think did it at the largest scale and to the largest yes. attentive audience. Todd, yes. excellent job with Farmville. Truly the OG. It's like the Super Mario Brothers of Facebook games. Like it's just the <laughs> it's a Facebook game ass <laughs> Facebook game. And you certainly made it exactly what VR Farmville would be. And I hated every minute of it. So good job with that. Kyle, you made a sovereign nation today. And I do appreciate <laughs> Well, not yet, but but we're building towards it. You are building towards it. I really liked that your exchange rate for <laughs> gems <laughs> felt oddly similar to one of the exchange rates from the cryptocurrency episode, and I don't remember which one it was. It was the banana coins that I, I did. Just, yeah. I just did an answer to the cryptocurrency episode and moved it over here. Like I'm not judging, man. It worked. Yeah. So I don't know, man. I, I'd say good vibes, but I think like many debate this episodes recently, all vibes are bad. Not sure there are many good vibes to be had. The vibes are off. Vibes are bad. Matt, I'm not convinced that I know what your game actually is. Uh, I, <laughs> Same, I dog. Just, I'm, I, I assume it's a clicker, and that's all I know. You click on places, and then they say, come back in five minutes. It's the click, same click game again. as Farmville with a different, they call the vegetables mob. Mob jobs. Mob jobs. <laughs> right. Mob jobs. Got it. Anyway, it's a game that I've I thought I had seen advertised, but that could have been Mafia Wars. So I don't know. I feel like I'm I'm being I've I've been gaslit by this. Um, but I've been mob pilled. I've been mob pilled. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, I am intimately aware of your game. I have not played it, but I think we've all actually played it. 
one way or another we've there was a farmville expansion at one point that had a gem matching component so oh we've yeah, all played I, bejeweled if not by that name yeah but... right and i was not prepared for you to bring a sovereign nation here today <laughs> didn't see it coming a third act reveal got me <laughs> yeah matt mob wars is such a such a good pick especially since it's the like the fake oreo to the to the oreo oh, like the oreo yeah. isn't the original cookie sandwich but it's the one everyone knows and mob wars is the opposite of that yeah um and yeah like making it a an mlm like downline pyramid scheme brilliant like get your friends in your mob family and take all their money from them and yeah todd like the others said farmville the super mario bros the sonic the hedgehog we'll say of yeah of facebook games yeah definitely like had its time in the sun it was certainly predatory when it started and you you did a thing and made it more predatory and and that's all we're doing here today so good good work awesome well Guys, I'm going to make this quick because I frankly don't want to talk about Facebook games anymore. <laughs> so the the VCs, whilst we were doing cocaine, <laughs> had heard, listened to your pitches and decided the criteria upon which they were judging, basically, we they want something that is not identical to what Facebook is currently doing, right? They, they still want to be a little bit different, but still have uh, some of that vibe, right? Still kind of get people thinking that like, oh, this is, this is. This is Facebook. So by that extension, we've got to eliminate Matt, and here's why. Hold the fucking Whoa. phone. I know, Boy. I know, I know. The challenge here was while Mob Wars feels definitely like an extension and it celebrates the history of Facebook, while it is not an active game, what you built today very much is what you could argue to be the biggest Facebook game of all, which is MLMs. <laughs> <laughs> It isn't not. Yeah, and and the legal feels as though Facebook may actually have some sort of copyright on MLMs as a whole in the next five years. So we're going to not touch that um, for now. Kyle, in a similar vein, we felt uh, they felt that, I know, they felt that there was a lot of promise with Bejeweled. They really liked the self-sustaining economy that you built. Unfortunately, Eve Online has has just <laughs> purchased has, is just creating their own version of a Web three environment and has basically done what you have done. So we have actually connected you with some of the big wigs at Eve Online. Oh, thank you, thank yes, you. Yes, you're very welcome. That leaves Todd, who brought Farmville, which they felt was the perfect kind of encapsulation of where Facebook was but then where it could never evolve to and where we're going to just take it to web four or something. Ooh. Everyone loves vanilla ice cream. Everyone loves vanilla ice cream. That is an <laughs> unobtrusive fact. The VCs felt were a little bit wary of your original pitch. And then as soon as you started adding in the idea of building in those microtransactions, they felt that, well, this really does best encapsulate Facebook because really what is Facebook other than a bunch of ways to make your friends feel guilty. And that's it today. That's uh, <laughs> that's Facebook games. <laughs> so thanks, everybody, for listening to Debate This. You can follow along with the arguments on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Debate This Cast or on our website at DebateThisCast.com. Want more Debate This content but just can't wait until two Tuesdays from now? Do you love hearing our voices and goofs and crave more for your ear, ear holes? Well, you're in luck because if you subscribe to our Patreon for $5, you can unlock the fourth Tuesday. By doing so, you will get access to the Patreon-only Discord and the premium feed, which currently includes the final season, final arc of our D&D real play show, The Office Drones. Spoilers, the last episode included the girl from Ipaniba, layered under a, ma a big scary boss fight it's the dumbest and best thing i have ever done so yeah check it out if you like DD. &D. also if you are listening to this and you are around the wisconsin area we will be at midwest gaming classic the end of march that's march 31st april 1st and april 2nd we're going to be getting a table there for the whole weekend 
come and check us out. The show is at the Wisconsin Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Specifically, if you can only go one day, come on Saturday. We're going to be doing our first ever live show at 7 p.m. Uh, on the side stage or the bonus stage, what they're calling it. Uh, so once again, that's Midwest Gaming Classic in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in the Wisconsin Center. That's March 31st, April 1st, April 2nd. Until next time, I'm Andrew Henderson. I'm Matt. Mob Job Bob presents Les Miserables, performed in Punjab. Uh, uh, I'm Todd. <laughs> Boat Note Grouse House Thomas. I'm Kyle. <laughs> Todd stole my middle name. Bit. Oh, oh, no. No. <laughs> I had house grouse note boat. And we're saying so sorry, Kyle, and thanks for debating with us. And if you think we're wrong, you can come fight us behind the swing sets, nerds.